Hey everyone, so in our last lesson we were looking at uh, intermolecular forces, so between molecules, and we're just going to take that a bit further looking at dipole, dipole and dispersion forces between molecules. So just remember that you know, polar covalent bonds are not intermolecular, they're intramolecular, so they're inside the molecule, and dipole, dipole and dispersion ones are going to be between molecules, so just remember that. So there's attractive forces between molecules and these intermolecular forces uh, can determine changes in uh, physical properties of the molecule. So they're not as strong as chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are within the molecule and they're very, very strong. So they're not as strong, but they're important in maintaining the structure and the um, organization of the, the whole state of the, uh, not the molecules, but the sum of all the molecules. So there are three main types of intermolecular forces. We're looking at dipole-dipole forces, dispersion forces, and hydrogen bonding. So in dipole-dipole forces, uh, polar molecules attract each other. So we're going to make sure that there's going to be a polar bond within the molecule, and then if there's a, a larger molecule, is there an overall uh, polarity over the whole molecule. So that's what, what's, what we're looking for here. So one end is going to be slightly positive, one end is going to be slightly negative, and they're going to, the opposites will attract. So the slightly negative Cl side can attract towards the slightly positive hydrogen side. So when we have dipole-dipole uh, forces involved, they can create some ordering in the whole, uh, in all the molecules. So they can start to align up together with the negatives going towards the positives, and then making some sort of order in, the, in, a, in a liquid and a solid state. Um, so the melting and boiling points of such molecules are higher for similar weight nonpolar molecules. So we know that melting and boiling points, we need energy to go in to break up these, these forces between molecules. So if we have similar weight ones, we're going to expect them to have similar melting and boiling points. But if they have stronger attraction between molecules, we can say that they have higher melting and boiling points. So hydrogen sulfide's melting and boiling points are significantly greater due to dipole-dipole interactions. So hydrogen sulfide is a bent molecule of similar weight to oxygen, which is linear. But look at the melting and boiling points. They're quite, quite, quite higher compared to oxygen. So, inter so that's why we get uh, differences in melting and boiling points. But we can also look at dispersion forces. So this is slightly different. Uh, intermolecular forces between nonpolar molecules tend to be dispersion forces, and um, this is because we get an instant and very temporary induced dipole, so a temporary dipole. So we get a fluctuation in electron distribution at any time, so we can get a slight negative charge moving to one side, and because we have a slight negative charge on one side, it's going to start repelling electrons on this side and start moving them across. So then this can be slightly more positive. And then this goes on. So a temporary dipole occurs at any moment in time when the electrons in an atom or molecule are not symmetrically distributed for that, just that moment. So we have a slight change and this causes another change in the next atoms. So we get a slight change that's not symmetrical because one side is a bit more negative now. And then when an atom or molecule with a temporary dipole is near another atom, it can get influenced by that. So the charge of the second atom is going to start being influenced by the first. So like we said here, we get a slight negative charge here getting pushed by some reason. So slight negative charges are going to repel slight negative charges on this side that was there and push them over to this side. So we now have a slight negative charge here and that leaves a slight positive charge here. So then we can get some uh, negative and positives attracting each other and this will cause a dispersion force. So a slight uh, attraction. So this keeps going all the way through the whole state and it means that we're going to have a dispersion force within, uh, between all the molecules. So a temporary dipole is an induced dipole. So we had a dipole here, it induces a dipole in the next one. And these attract to form dispersion forces. So these forces are quite weak, um, but they arise from temporary dipoles and these are called dispersion forces. So dispersion forces are going to be slight dipoles 
Not as strong as the dipole-dipole ones, but at least there's a little bit of attraction between them. So dispersion forces generally happen when mo uh, the molecules are nonpolar um, and they're either held together by nothing else other than the dispersion force. So we can see that the, the ones highlighted in yellow are going to have dispersion forces involved. And these ones are, and especially in this case, are linear type ones. So the right hand side of the periodic table and the non-metals here are going to be mainly due to dispersion forces. So dispersion forces air, mo between molecules will increase uh, with strength with the number of electrons present in the, in the shells of the molecules. So here we have helium. Its atomic mass is four. It has enough, two electrons in it, one shell, the first shell, and it has a melting point of minus 272. As we go down, we increase the atomic mass. We also increase the amount of electrons, so also more shells and the melting point is increasing from minus 272 up to 112, minus 112. So why is this? Uh, we also can then look at electrons in larger molecules. So this means that they, even though that the ones before had lots of, mel uh, there's only one atom, but has lots of electrons because it's larger in, sh in size, we can also look at these ones here, the hydrocarbons, they also have a lot more electrons because there's more more atoms though in this case. So we increase the molecular weight, so we're adding on a carbon to the chain, we're increasing the melting point. So minus to a positive and again with a boiling point. So this is due to dispersion forces being involved with the electrons because remember if we have electrons surrounding it we can push them to one side, push them to one side means that there's going to be a slight charge difference over the whole molecule, temporary but a little bit and therefore we can have attraction between the molecules, similar with the, the ones we did before. So dispersion forces contribute to attractive forces between the molecules. So we're going to have attraction between, not inside the molecule. However, in the case of highly polar molecules, the dipole-dipole forces are much stronger and the effect is more significant compared to the dispersion forces. So we, we know that dipole-dipole forces are more uh, stronger so if there's more of it then it's going to make these uh, dispersion forces less less obvious. So between molecules that are non-polar uh, or slightly polar dispersion forces are the main of, uh, force attracting them between them. So in this case we're going to have mostly dispersion forces because it's non-polar. So although hydrogen chloride is a uh, polar molecule because we know Chlorine is electronegative, pulling the electrons closer to it compared to the hydrogen. It doesn't have the highest melting point because it's got minus 114 compared to minus 51. Uh, in this series, HI is the highest one. And because in HI there's uh, more dispersion forces, it compensates for the dipole-dipole uh, the ones in hydrogen chloride. So even though it's electronegative and it's polar, the HI ones with the dispersion forces uh, overall, all of them together, are stronger in total compared to this one. So the melting point of pentane is 27 degrees higher than the dimethylpropane. So this is pentane and then this one is dimethylpropane. They have the same chemical formula of CH, uh, C5H12 but the structure is different. This one is a chain and this one is in kind of like a Square type formation. So the difference in the the uh, melting point and boiling points is due to the shape of the molecules. So because the pentane is a chain and the dimethylpropane is kind of more condensed into a square structure, we can say that the zigzag structure has a higher surface area compared to the dimethylpropane. So that means there's going to be more chances for intermolecular bonding between this one and another molecule and compared to this one. So dimethylpropane has less contact with other molecules so there's less chance of interaction and therefore in this case dispersion forces which are weaker but uh, because there's more of them we can say that it contributes to a higher uh, melting and boiling point in this case compared to this case. So intermolecular force strength orders 
we know that hydrogen bonding is the highest, uh, most strongest one, followed by dipole-dipole, and then finally with dispersion forces being the weakest one. So we can say hydrogen bonding is the strongest, dipole-dipole is next, and then dispersion is the weakest. Dispersion forces, even though they're weak, you can add them together, and if it's a lot of them, then we can, it can really negate any hydrogen bonding. So it can be stronger in some cases than hydrogen bonding. So even though we have hydrogen bonding present, we can, it doesn't always mean it will have stronger bonding in total. So question 17, we'll be looking at uh, outlining the meaning of the term intermolecular forces. So we need to make sure we outline uh, what we want to say. So in this case, we're looking at intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces are attractive forces between molecules. And these may be dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. So next, question 18. Identify the forces between molecules. So identify means we just have to state them. So attractive forces between molecules can be one of three, remember? Dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. So these are being the weakest one, then a stronger, and then the strongest. So question 19, distinguish between dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces. So with distinguish, we need to make sure we outline the differences between these two, dispersion and dipole-dipole forces. So dispersion forces are weak attractive forces between molecules and are due to random movements of electrons around the atom. And they form, this means because they move, they're forming momentary charges or slight polarity in the molecule. However, dipole-dipole forces are stronger attractive forces between molecules and dipole-dipole forces are not temporary, they're permanent over the molecule. And the size of the dipole-dipole force depends on how polar the molecule is. So really it's about the electronegativity of the atoms involved. So question 20, explain the trend um, in the following molecules. So F2 to I2, and we're looking at the melting points in these. So minus 220 up to 114. So in these molecules, because there's only two atoms involved, it means they're linear, and therefore only dispersion forces are involved because the linear ones are nonpolar molecules. As the mass of the molecule increases from fluorine to iodine, because we're increasing weight, um, the electron cloud gets larger because as the atom increases in proton size, we need to add on shells with electrons to make it neutral. Um, the electron cloud gets larger, so more shells. Uh, so temporary dipoles are stronger as more electrons are displaced. So if we have more electrons, we can push more to one side, and that means more positive on the other side. And therefore, we can get stronger ones compared to ones at the top. So as we get uh, increased in size, we get more electrons, more electrons displaced, stronger forces in between, meaning we get more energy needed to, uh, in, to break them apart, uh, the molecules apart, and then therefore we have increased melting points. Question 21. A soluble molecular substance such as sugar, uh, sucrose in this case is C11H22O11, uh, it's mixed with water. So firstly we need to identify the forces that must, we must break for it to dissolve in the water. So intermolecular forces in the sugar crystals must be broken. Uh, and also we need to break up water molecules. So we have hydrogen bonds and dipole forces of involved in the water, so between water molecules. And for it to dissolve, we need to break the crystals and then also move the water apart to fit the sugar crystals in. So next, describe the attraction uh, that develops between the free water and the sugar molecules. So hydrogen atoms in the water uh, form hydrogen bonds with oxygen atoms in the sugar molecules because there's oxygen here. So we can get some bonding between those. Oxygen atoms in the water molecules form hydrogen bonds with hydrogen atoms in the sugar molecules. So we're getting uh, attraction between the, the water and the sugar molecules to then uh, compensate for them to allow it to go into the water. If it doesn't allow it to go into the water, it's not really dissolving. So in summary, what we looked at today is uh, dipole-dipole forces and uh, dispersion forces, which are intermolecular forces. And intermolecular forces will then allow it to uh, interact with other molecules and allow 
to tell us whether they have high melting point or low melting points and high boiling points or low melting uh, boiling points. And it also they can tell us whether or not things can be dissolved in another sol uh, solution. Thank you.